Math 76, Lesson 33, Writing Percents as Fractions, Part 1. So, turning percents into fractions is actually a pretty simple process. Uh, the key thing you have to remember is that percents are always taken out of a value of 100. So, typically, uh, if we wanted to say 100%, that would be talking about like one full item. Like, for example, 100% of uh, Mr. Claiborne would be, you know, my hands, fingers, toes, my, my whole body, right? 100% of your body is your entire body. And then we could say that 50% of your body is just, you know, um, you know, your right half. So if you, you were to draw a line down the center of your body from, you know, your forehead down your nose, down your, down your neck, down your belly button, um, that would cut you in half vertically. So your right half would be 50% of your body and your left half would be 50% of your body. Uh, but all of you, your left and your right half, would be 100% of your body. So I take that little rant about talking about the number 100 to show you how to write percents as fractions. Uh, so let's say we have the number 80%. The way we're going to turn this into a fraction, and this works for every single percent, even if it's bigger than 100, is we just take that percent and we put it as a numerator over the number 100. So if I take 80%, that is going to be equal to 80 over 100. From there, all I have to do is reduce. So I can see both of these numbers are divisible by 10. I remember that from my divisibility rules. So I can divide 80 by 10. I can divide 100 by 10. And then I get 8 over 10. And then I see both of these are divisible by 2. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And that can no longer be reduced. So my fraction is going to be 4 fifths. 80% is the exact same number as 4 fifths. All right, we're just taking the same value and writing it in fraction form, okay? And eventually we'll learn how to turn fractions into percents, and you'll see how we can take the fraction four-fifths and turn it into 80%. It's very, very cool. <clears throat> now let's, uh, and that's the whole method right there. You just take the percent, put it over 100, and reduce. Let's, let's do a couple more examples here so we can uh, kind of, uh, you know, get you guys a good feel for how this is going to work. We'll take some oddball numbers, like uh, we'll take the 24 percent and then we'll do we'll do five percent and then we'll do 23 percent okay so again uh, we're just gonna be using the same method of taking the percent and writing over the number 100 so I'll take 24 percent I'll put 24 over 100 I see that both of these numbers are divisible by 2 all right, so I'm going to have a couple of steps here. 24 divided by 2 is 12. 100 divided by 2 is 50. Uh, and again, these are both still divi divisible by 2. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. 50 divided by 2 is 25. Uh, 25 isn't divisible by 3, 2, or 6. So that's as low as it can go. So 24% is equal to 6 25ths. Now let's go with 5%. Again, what if our percent is only a single digit? It doesn't matter. We're still going to put it over the number 100, right? Now, some of you may be thinking, okay, hey, that's it. But if you remember divisibility rules, if a number ends in 0 or 5, it is divisible by the number 5. So 100 can be evenly divided by 5. And a quick way that I always remember this is I know money, and I know that a nickel is worth 5 cents, and a dollar is worth 100 cents, and I know that there are 20 nickels in $1. So whenever I see 5 and 100, I think there's 20 fives or 20 nickels in $1. So um, 5 will go into 120 times. So if I divide 5 by 5, I get 1. There's 1 5 and 5. And if I divide 100 by 5, I remember that there's 20 nickels in $1. So 1 20th. And that is the fraction that 5% is equal to. Okay, now let's go with 23%. So we'll go ahead, we'll take the percent, we'll put it over 100, 23 over 100, and that's, uh, what, uh, I don't remember 23. Are there any times tables? No, no. Can two go, no, two can't go into 23, three can't go into 23, five doesn't, six doesn't, hmm, seven, nope, seven doesn't work either. Hey, so 23 is what we call a prime number. We'll learn more about that later, but 23 has no factors except for 1 in the number 23. Uh, so then I ask, well, can 23 go into 100 evenly? And it can't. So 23 over 100 is my final answer. So sometimes your fractions, you'll have to divide multiple times. Sometimes you'll only have to divide once. Sometimes you'll realize you can't divide at all. 
and your percent looks very, very similar to your fraction. Well, that's it for this lesson. If you guys have any questions, let me know on the school website, and I will see you in class.